So we should only have three national sprints now. Yeah, I promise a future is one. Food and security will deal with the state of the English military. Probably what we deal with down here. A modest proposal. Colonel David Sterling, we have reviewed your memo and we are intrigued by your proposal. The United States is interested in close cooperation with our fellow OFN allying powers and the of international terrorism is a grave concern to us all. Such a proposal was great interest to us. The idea of multinational special operations unit with the emphasis on counter-terrorism is indeed one solution to this problem. For to make the organisation, we agree that special operations forces from America, England and the various OFN nations, as well as various national intelligence agencies coordinating the site, would be the right way to staff it. The proposal of England as the place to base its interest is a bit unusual. Even with your stated reasons of unparalleled experience of the Special Air Service, world accessibility via British Airways from Heathrow and advantageous press restrictions under English law. I'll think about a proposal for this Spectrum organisation and get back to you. We request that you refrain from asking for updates as we'll get back to you with our final decision. Best wishes, Admiral Horatio Verio Jr., USN. That was a rejection, wasn't it? That's what it sounded like. Nor an excursion. Ah, yes, it goes well. If it goes well, we will do the same thing with the Foreign Ambassadors. Ah, yes, we're basically just off to Scotland to see what the crack is. And Richard Nixon has resigned. Oh, Borman has definitely won then. He's going to win. The Oxford Trials. The matter of what to do with the officials and military members of the collaboration regime have been hotly debated subject. The life resistance, HMLR proper, and Stalin's faction, all having disagreements in the face of the accused, and either many groups of the people as a whole. A solution, as agreed to by Okalinka Sterling and Alexander, is to hold a series of public trials for the most notorious collaborators, so our people in the world will know that this government is not the same as that which it replaced. That it values justice and not mere revenge of the hand, they may be guilty to a one, but the traitors will receive a fair trial for their sins. Ah, so we've got the head of the snake, the traitor, the reformist, the liberal, the rabid dogs, and the bootlicker. And the gavel strikes. Ah, three civilian factories. How many civvies have we got? 21. Oh, well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's go with 9. Okay, I guess we've got 30. Right. The Oxford Trials. The newly established Government of England has determined that the upcoming trials against the collaborators will take place in the city of Oxford. In keeping with England's democratic and liberal traditions, fairness will triumph over fury. Every single trial will be conducted to its fullest extent and with the utmost fairness. The crimes and sentences of any accused person will be treated with deadly seriousness, which we will have to take public pre uh, perception into account. If we act too mercifully, the public will call us weak, act too harshly, and will smear us as tyrants. If all the rule of the law, we will be rightfully accepted as liberators. Good, that's what we want. Let's start with the head of the snake. Alec Douglas Home, the longest serving Prime Minister in the history of the collaborationist England, while his electoral strength still remains undefeated, his tenure was ended by the Free Peoples. He had tried to submit. Now we shall bring him before the court to defend himself. He is accused of every injustice, every violation, every misery suffered by the English people during the war. Every order, every action, every inaction can be traced to him and him alone. We intend to make him answer for every one of those crimes and prosecute the leader of the collaborationists to the fullest extent for the crimes committed under his command. The head of the snake. Outdated equipment in production. What bloody outdated equipment? Ah, or artillery. Much debate has raged throughout the resistance forces regarding the fairness of the upcoming Oxford trials. Some have argued that the completely neutral apolitical men should be selected, though those voices are few are far between. Various factions within the resistance are pushing their own suggestions, accusing each other of being puppets. A shift compromise has been reached. Two judges from the Netherlands camp, two judges from the left resistance, two judges from Her Majesty's most loyal resistance, Pauper, have been selected to share the responsibility of judging the collaborators. Much rest on the shoulder of these men. I just hope they put country above all else. Let the trials commence. Indeed, let them begin. Maybe we won't finish the tree this episode. I'll finish the trials. Let's do the trials. We'll finish with dealing with all the traitors. Alec does at home was a square into the courtroom, already certain on how he would be judged. He held no hope that the judges would grant him mercy. He was the Prime Minister, and to the rebels, he had betrayed his country, betrayed his people. Home was forcefully mentioned to his seat, alongside his defence team, who could not hide their contempt for him. Those were the friendliest faces in the room, and then the judge began to proceed. Alec Douglas Holm, you stand here in front of all of England, accused of heinous crimes. You stand accused of high treason against England and our people. How do you plead? Not guilty, his lawyer responded unconvincingly. Holmes' defence team gave an uninspired, stunted speech that claimed he was too scared to fill his duty as an Englishman to resist the Germans, 
and fear for his life. When they were finished, the prosecution immediately tore into home and suddenly his character called him a coward and of course a damn bloody traitor. The jury took no time to deliver the deliberation. Hope's first thought after the verdict were of rage, those fools. Once Germany gets back on their feet, they would be back to crush England once and for all. There would be no England after they were done. But he calmed down. There was no use in spending his last days angry at people he understood. He only wished they weren't so hasty, hasty. One was not phased as a se they sentenced him to death and did not struggle as he pulled back to his cell to await his fate. Ah, the execution of him. Home sat in cell away in his fate. He had already come to terms with his impending execution not long after his sentencing. There was no use fighting now. However, his death crept closer and closer to him. Lord Holmes mind drifted through in our life. He thought of a life where he held the resistance. He saw himself smuggling documents out of Westminster, subtly resisted Germans from inside Parliament. But was it that what he was already doing? It was an open secret that, uh, that many in Parliament had no love for the Germans. Yes, they were collaborators, but it was necessary to work for them then to keep the boot from coming down too hard on all of England. Holmes' realisation was interrupted two guards who ushered him to his feet. It's time. Holmes led to the sunlight and saw a earth. He recognised Tower London, which loomed over him. He was escorted to the opposite side of the Tower Green and made a kneel against a wall and saw a small gathering was assembled to watch. He could make, couldn't make could make out anyone else. I'm sure Ockley was watching the firing squad march then. Halted and executed a crisp right face. He stood attention away and further. Commands ready. Sharp command punctured the morning air. Shoulders raised their, their light full. Holmes' mind filled with activity. He continued to try to rationalise his decision. If you only himself. Aim. The soldiers trained the rifles on home. Saw little fear in their eyes. Just resolve. Final regrets formed through Holmes' mind. If only he could take it all. Fire. Holmes' last thoughts of regret were interrupted by four shots that rang throughout the courtyard. The head of the snake has been cut. But isn't the saying, um, you cut off the one head, two more appear? We're just going down a rabbit hole, really. Arthur Chesterton. If there was a man more rebel than all of England... Revealed, sorry, and read by it? I don't know. Hated by both rebels and collaborators like we have yet to find him. A fascist uh, demagogue so low you could walk under a dash hound's belly. The head of the collaboration took place and the head of the Blackshirt parliamentary group during the war. Certainly he has an enormous amount of to answer for, though we will try to be fair to him. As fair as one can be when looking at an individual as heinous as Chesterton is. Yes, we need to deal with the bootlicker. Gosh, the Aryan Brotherhood is destroying people. The English person's duty. Oh, it's election time. Headed up by and backed by colonial stands for the restoration of people in England, but the necessary reforms to keep it relevant. No, for Queen and Country, NDL. Oh dear. Throw him off. Get him to the. Send him to the gallows. Eh. Okay. So they say NDL members and moderates wish to send him to exile. Well, hardline. Ah, I'm gonna throw him off the aisles. Because I do want the National Democratic League to win. Right, time for the traitor. Bernard Montgomery, if he had died in the invasion, he would be forever remembered as a hero. If he refused service with the collaborators, he might still be. If he had joined with HMMLR, he would have had a chance of redemption. And yet, here he is. The case is clear cut. He was in charge of collaborations with the army, and everything the army did could be blamed on him. However, he still has conducted actions in the past that were ad admirable, and there remains a non significant amount of respect for him amongst Claude and his supporters. It might be worth to temper justice with mercy. We could maybe be able to befriend him. Not befriend him, but get him to come back with us. The vast judgment. Save the for the important people. Oh, Mario Thatcher's been left free, and Borman has won. Gosh, the Socialist Labour Party is leaving the polls. Right. I'm not going to read this all again. We're just going to look at the the options. Lemson and the rest of his comp days in shameful exile. 
forced labor, death is the only. Yeah, we're gonna send him into exile again as we continue to boost. Oh, help if I actually chose the next focus. There goes President Kennedy. Uh, the names are numerous, but there's one thing that unites them all. They were commissioned generals in the Collaboration Army. Now we have to judge them for their atrocities committed under their commands. And have no future in our army. That much is clear. But how do we want to punish them? Some are arguing that our blood can answer only blood can answer for blood. Others are arguing that a violent retaliation against these men is not who we are. That is very true. We are better than them, the rabbit dogs. Oh no. Oh, it's fine. Oh, I, th I thought they were going after you there. I thought they were going after Himmler. Send him out of the country. Send him out of the military is the one we're going for. Peaceful massacre. Oh, let's not do that. Send him out of the military. Sorry, I'm kind of just jumping through these because we're a little bit over time now. Um, and I just want to kind of get through this. Harold Macmillan, Chancellor and the Treasurer of His Majesty's Exchequer and the head of the reformist wing of the Royal Party. Well known for his stance towards self and the collaboration with the government and a lower and larger degree of freedom. His convictions apparently were not enough to overcome the fear of German intervention. And now he awaits the punishment for being a wartime minister. And Douglas Holmes' cabinet. It's not like they are a prominent defence of the cabinet, however. Unlike Holmes, he has never been in a position where he was re reasonable for the horrible crimes. Responsible for the horrible crimes of the government. Unlike Chiston, he is not a terrible and shameless individual who truly believed in... Right, uh, yeah, he, he's, not, he's not a bad person, really. The liberal, original modelling, by all accounts those who knew him, he should not have joined the collaboration at all. One of the most prominent voices against the government while in Parliament, many of similar beliefs joined HMLR when the war broke out. And he betrayed them all and stayed with the collabs. Now he has brought before us to defend his decision. Ah, the trail of Harold. He'll move from the sea entirely. Gosh, one bullet back to the head. Clap, clap. Jeez. <laughs> it's just what everyone killed there. Face until the election seventy six. Oh, I can campaign. I'm an idiot. Add four popularity to your party's popularity. Slap him with whatever, he'll be paranoid anyways. Yeah, we'll go with that. And the gavel strikes. It is done. Ultra trials have been completed. Now we merely await the sentence. Throughout these trials, we have seen the very most, the very worst of the collaboration this government and its military dogs had to offer. We have heard ten, ten heard tell of countless crimes and even more horrific goings on in the dark underbelly of the collaboration regime. But the sentence shall apportion guilt only to those deserving. We can campaign in the West Midlands and almost take control there. Can definitely do it in y uh, Lanarkshire. Can definitely do it in London as well. The gavel strikes. Right, let's do it from the ashes. Uh, rivers clogged with the rains of bridges. Shells of factories being lived in by hundreds of homeless people. Vast fields of burnt wheat trampled on by men and machines. Block after block of collapsed brick piles where homes once stood. Bombs and unexploded shells have been discovered every day. England is a land destroyed, a land broken beyond use. We shall rebuild it to make England once remembers, to make England one remembers, to make an England that will lead one into the future. Good. We will now begin construction once again. Right. As to the West Midlands. There's only sixty days until. So the election could do we get a couple more bits on our side so right now the uh, the Labour Party has got the control our swords order over central oh gosh yeah they've got some guys joining back up with them right to roads England has long known the importance of all the infrastructure the Romans laid solid paved roads that we still use today our canals made us an industrial power and our railroads brought much of the world into a mere enlightened age now we are thank you Now we are married in poverty and our roads are destroyed. One may draw a conclusion from this. England's roads will be rebuilt. Broad highways will link our nation together. Trucks and cars will have smooth, well-built paths to any area they wish to go. 
proper framework in place, we can begin again our industrial revol uh, not revolution, <laughs> reconstruction. All right, West Midlands, come on, we can take control there. We will do Lanarkshire. Alright. That removes it completely. We'll keep that for now. To the people. One must not forget, while we're doing all this, not for some narcissistic desire to have our, our nation achieve some arbitrary definition of greatness, not for the sole wish to have the coal agitators suffer, we are doing this for the people of England. They do not deserve what was inflicted upon them by the Germans and their Kiesling lackeys. They deserve to have the say in how things are done, and they deserve to have decent, happy life. Remember this and make it clear where our priorities lie. To the people! That's going to modify food insecurity, which is good. Oh, the West Midlands is still not with us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh gosh, meet the Kulsas. Okay. What about the king? What happened to the king? King Edward, what happened to him? To the army, our military accomplished what it set out to do, defeat the collaborators and set in place a new system of government that will help the people of England, but it's a new role, it is not as adapt as it should be. Must be reformed, we'll win to make the necessary decision to reshape the military in the way we want. Okay, good. Yeah, so West Midlands is under our control. We can get Lang uh, Langshire under our control as well. Might be able to get London as well. I've got signal companies, good, good, good. Let's get the, oh, we've already got you. Let's get the improved jet fighter, the Horton HO229A3. Looks pretty cool, not gonna lie. Looks pretty cool, 37 days. No campaign in Gloucestershire. That's fine by me. Lancashire is under our control as well now. Let's see if we can get London before the elections go. Right, rebuilding the system. England's economy does not work. In fact, it hasn't worked for many years. Many of it's merely the result of massive uh, destruction and carnage of the two massive wars on the island. There are a few things that just don't work. We'll be prepared to replace all of it. Taxes, regulations, jobs, industries, everything will be rebuilt. And if we know that it won't work, we'll reform it to put it in something that will. England will be prosperous again, and we're going to do anything to make that happen. Hell yeah. Get two civvies and removes the reconstruction of England. State of the English military. Well, we've almost dealt with that. Campaign, campaign, campaign. We've got 30 days left. Right. Bread and what? Long last, the hunger plague in the nation is beginning to subside. Efforts have been successful, and we soon won't have a problem like that anymore. So what do we do? Uh, we'll put our efforts to into the leftover cash. Welfare is a good option since many still have other issues aside from hunger. A strong democratic system would require some extra cash as well. Or could just spend it on the army and ensure another humiliation like this will never happen again. Come on, we need to get London. If we get London... Oh, well, saying that, it's very equal now. Vindication of purpose. Yeah, if you want to read that, just go ahead and pause. Come on, one more campaign, I'll do it. Oh, the dicks, they took back Lancashire from us. It's okay, because we're about to take London from them. Damn it, it's equal. Damn it. Um, where do they spend the rest? The army and thousands of extra soldiers, regular local militias, and reservist groups. Some say this is too much. They say that they, uh, they could be doing much more useful work in other places. Things like rebuilding a nation, repairing factories, repaving roads, and that sort of thing. It's an interesting proposal, and we have to consider the possibility that our forces could be more effectively utilised in other ways. Yeah, they're still doing Lancashire. They are. That's fine. That is fine. Right, that's that's done as well. The English Phoenix. 
Scars are still uh, are still present in the English landscape and English soul, but thanks to the reconstruction commands, they are scars rather than open wounds. The process of healing won't be able to fully get onto its feet until the people have elected a new government. And nobody would be lying if they said the commands did a damn good job with what they had. The ashes of repression of war, a new England rising. England will the shack shackles of totalitarianism, with the vultures of fashion picking out its bones. The new forever is a free England which will govern this land, governed by the people, of the people, for the people, not for the tyrant in Germania, and a curse upon his house. Let him know that the fire of freedom rises. Okay, our campaign in London is going to finish. And we should have enough time to maybe get Lancashire under control. East Anglia. East Anglia we don't have control of, I don't think. No, I don't think we do. Oh! We actually had control of more. There was actually a couple up here. Oxfordshire's lost us, that's fine. We should be fine. English Phoenix. Citizenship reborn, one man, one vote, though now that women can vote as well, they're saying they might need to update it somewhat. One person, one vote doesn't quite run off the tongue so well. Either way, the National Democratic League and the Socialist Labour Party now prepare to face off in the first democratic elections held on English soil in two decades. At uh, stake is the future of monarchy, the economy and the reconstruction process. As well as the assorted reforms each party says they will or won't enact. But it shan't be some shady council of military men who decide how this happens. It shall be the people, and the people alone. This is what we fought for in a free and independent England. Let us enjoy it while well we can. Good. Come on, we can fit one last one in. Because that's one, two, that's five, six, seven, eight. And hopefully get a ninth. That's our tree finish right now. We're just waiting for the election. Which is happening now. And we got Lancashire. Decision of the people. National Democratic League wins the elections. Boom, boom, boom. Victory of the National Democratic League. Let us go forward together. Good, good, good. And now this is our tree. Glorious. So, God save the Queen. Led democracy. Secret intelligence. Dealing with Philby. Okay, right. I'm going to leave the episode there. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I shall be back very soon for some more. Until then, take care. Cheer bye for now.